Okay, so we've seen the indefinite integral, which is the antiderivative, the function whose derivative is the argument. We've seen definite integrals now, which have the bounds, and those represent an area. It's a number that we evaluate, an area be of a, between a curve and an axis, right? Signed area, positive or negative. Okay, now... We've seen all the basic rules, the fundamental rules for our antiderivatives, and we've seen that actually evaluating the definite integral really just involves taking the antiderivative and then evaluating and subtracting, right? f at b minus f at a, or antiderivative at b minus antiderivative at a. Now we want to look at integration by substitution, or u sub. We use this, this is the primary fallback tool. It's the, the first fallback tool if it's not a basic rule, right? If you hand me what is integral of x squared dx, there's nothing to do, right? It's just a straight power rule. x cubed, x cubed over 3 plus c, and we're done. Okay, add 1, divide by the new power, don't forget plus c. That's it. So if it's just a basic rule, we're good to go. We can just fall back on that. Just do our antiderivatives. If it's something more complicated, in fact, what this particularly applies to is composites. Okay, It's the analog of the chain rule. So chain rule for derivatives. U substitution is the analog of that chain rule for integrals. So composite functions. Okay, so it's four composites. That's what I mean by something that's slightly more complicated than just a basic rule. You know, instead of being just the integral of sine of x, maybe it's the integral of sine of 2x. I know, oh, there's something else inside that sign. There's another change going on there. It's double, right? It's not just straight sine of x. Now it's 2x, so that's that's double as fast, the change inside. So I need to worry about that. Or, you know, if I had e to the x squared, you know, oh goodness, well, if it was e to the x, we'd be done, right? It's just e to the x. But since it's e to the x squared, it's something else that's up in there. So... It's in this situation where I have something a little more complicated than just a basic rule that I'm looking to use a u-sub. Now, the pattern for when u-sub works, this doesn't look pretty. I'm going to write it two ways, but don't get scared by this. It's not nice when we write it in the math speak, but once you see it play out and you see it a bunch of times, it, it becomes very familiar and it's not as ugly as all this. So let's say um, we're looking for this pattern. We have the integral of f of u of x, where u is some continuous function of x, okay? Any continuous function of x. This is what I'm saying about a composite, right? I have this u of x function inside of the f function. This is the first part of the pattern. Now I need u prime of x, that is to say the derivative of u, dx. So the derivative of the inside function needs to be here. Okay? This is the pattern that I'm looking for in order to do a u sub. I want this inside function, I want to substitute, I want to use a u for that. But what's at stake and whether or not it's going to work is if I have the derivative there in the problem as well. All right. Now, a constant never bothers me, right? You can always pull a constant out. Constant doesn't make any difference to the change. So it's just junk. We can, I mean, it's not complete junk. We need it there, it's, but it's just a multiple, right? So you can pull it out and then just multiply back in later. So a constant is never a problem. But if I have some, my u is something more uh, complicated or a higher order function, say like an x cubed, well, 
I'm gonna, when I take the derivative of x cubed, I got three x squared. So that x squared there, that derivative, needs to be in here somewhere. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Okay, so this piece right here, that's the key, that's what's important. And I'm always just looking to sub for the inside part. Generally, that'll play out as like the denominator. That's a best case scenario, right? If I have like integral of one over and a bunch of junk down here, dx, I go, well, the integral of one over u du is just ln of u. That's super easy to integrate. So if I can get rid of all this junk downstairs and just say u is whatever all that junk is, then I've got this integral of 1 over u du, as long as the du is there, that's easy. It's ln absolute value of u plus c, and we just back sub our u and we're done. So that's a typical sort of instance where I really want to use a u sub. If I can substitute everything that's down in the denominator, right? And you can see that what I mean by that being a composite, this function is 1 over x, yeah? And then inside that 1 over x, there's whatever is downstairs. Okay? So if I can just sub for everything in the denominator, sweet. That's a super easy ln. We're done. Um, that's general, one of the ways that it plays out. But ultimately, the rule is, or what we're looking to do, is substitute for whatever is inside. Right? I have this composite function. I have a function inside another function. I want to get rid of whatever change is happening inside that function in order to turn it into one of my basic rules. Well, if I have the sine of x squared, well, the sine is doing this change, and x squared is doing this change, and I've got a change inside of the change, and I can't tease that out dx. And I say, okay, screw this then. Screw dx. I don't like the x dimension, I'm going to create my own dimension, the u dimension, so that I can say u is x squared, right? Which will mean that I can rewrite that as the sine of u. And now that's a basic rule, right? I can integrate that, it's just negative cosine u, no problem. Now what will be at stake is if du is there, I need a 2x dx in order for that to work, okay? Because the derivative here, what's the derivative of u? It's 2x. Uh, let me actually write what I'm saying here. So we've got this u equal x squared. This is the substitution that I want to do in order to simplify this and rewrite it as, some, as a basic rule. So I need to take the derivative u with respect to x well, that's just 2x. I just take the derivative. But what that does is it gives us a link between our u dimension and the x dimension, right? The x dimension is dx. It's this little arrow that's going left to right. Yeah? This u dimension is x squared. So it's a little arrow that's going... Right? It's x squared. And we're saying, okay, I'm going to put my dimension along that line. Since the dimension itself is doing that curviness, all that change is going to be gone. And all I have to worry about is looking at the sine change, which I can integrate. Right? So we're inventing this new dimension, and we need the link. We need to know, okay, I know what my dx is. It's this little horizontal area arrow, but what is this u? What is du? What is the u arrow in that dimension? Well, it's right here. du is 2x dx. This is the link, right? Here's du. That's that little arrow that's going in the x squared dimension. And this is the link to dx, to the little straight arrow left to right. So the issue of what's at stake in this problem would be I have to have this x. That x also has to be somewhere in that problem. The 2 doesn't bother me, right? 
I can always ignore that. But that X would be, it would be important. I'd have to have it somewhere in order for that to work. In other words, to do a U sub, I would need X, and then I would DX. Again, the two I don't care about, but I have to have that X in there somewhere. That X DX is DU here, okay? So that's this derivative of U DX right here. DU is the derivative of U, right? Just take the derivative times dx, right here. du is the derivative of u times dx, here. That's this piece, u, not d. So the idea, or what we're trying to do, is to rewrite this composite mess with the derivative sitting out there as just Well, all of this is du, and here it's just u, right? We're substituting in u. So we'll have the integral f of u du. That's our goal. That's going to be a basic rule that we can just integrate, which would be you know, the antiderivative of u plus c. Then, of course, we need to just back sub what u is, and we got it. All right. So that's the pattern that we're looking for. It's very important that we have that du in there, that link between our two dimensions. And let's let's just look at some examples and see how it goes. That was sort of one there, but. Let's try. I don't know, I'm just gonna steal some here. Let's try integral of 1 plus 6x, mm, doesn't even matter, um, to the fifth power times 6dx. All right. Now, first instinct might be I can pull that 6 out. It's just junk. Um, but for now, we'll just wait, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Because I have this composite function. I have x to the fifth with this linear function inside it. And I go, man, if I could u sub for what's inside of there, then I'll just have u to the fifth, and that's a straight power rule, right? u to the six over six, and we're done. So my goal is to try to sub for whatever is on the inside of that composite function. Okay, if u is 1 plus 6x, this is what I'd want. But right now we're in this if stage, right? What's at stake is whether or not I can sub. Can I get um, my du in there? Well, what is the derivative of u? du, derivative constant is 0. Derivative of 6x, well, 1 times 6 is 6. Oops, dx. And I go, okay, sweet. There I have the link. Du is 6dx. Now, this right here, 6dx, it's sitting right there, yeah? 6dx is du. Again, this 6dx is du. So I'm going to sub for it. This 6dx is just du, and now I have this f of u, u to the fifth power. I can substitute in for u, and I have my du. And like I said, this is just a straight power rule. Easy peasy. Add 1, divide by the new power, u to the sixth over 6, but we need to back sub. Right? The question asked us to do this in terms of x. We just invented this u because it was convenient for us. So, but we need to answer in terms of x. That's what it asked with respect to x. So all I need to do is just back sum. We've got u is 1 plus 6x. 1 plus 6x to the 6th 
over six, and don't forget plus C, and we're done. All right. Now, let me just show you that, let's say the six hadn't been there. It's still not gonna bother me, and I'll show you why. Um, let's just say we had integral one plus six x to the fifth dx. So that six is not sitting there. And I say, well, I want to sub for whatever's inside that composite function. So I want to sub u equal one plus six x, same as before. I go, okay, my du is derivative of a constant of zero, six dx. And I go, okay, I don't have six dx there. What I do have to substitute is dx, right? I have this dx sitting here. So I'll just solve this for dx. dx is one sixth du. One sixth du is dx. So that dx that's sitting up there, it's one sixth du. And that one sixth, I don't care, right? I just pull it outside. It's not gonna bother me. One sixth integral u to the fifth du. Right? So I've substituted in my u, u to the fifth. I've substituted the dx with one sixth du, but then I can just pull that one sixth out. I don't care about it, it doesn't bother me. And then off we run. We're just u to the sixth over six. And so like u to the sixth over 36, and then back sub one plus six x to the sixth over 36 plus a constant. And we're done. Okay, so that's what I was saying about a constant never bothers me. I can always just pull it out, right? It's just junk outside until the end, until I just multiply it through. It's if there's any other change, like when we had that, when I showed you sine of x squared, when I take that derivative, I still have an x left over. That's change left. So that has to be there. Constant never bothers me, but um, x's, functions, do. All right. Now, what if I had extra stuff? Like, let's say I had um, integral of 1 plus, 1 plus 6x to the fifth 6x dx. Am I in trouble now? Say, well, I still want to sub in for that composite, right? So my du is 6dx. And I go, awesome. 6dx is sitting right there. So that's my du. Fine. But I have this x. Well, right now, if I did my sub, I can sub for this. That's u to the fifth. The 6dx, that is du but I have this extra X that's chilling out there. Now, does that bother me? No. Why not? Well, because I have the link between U and X. I defined that link. I made it up right here, right? Here I have the link between U and X. So X must be U minus one over six. I'm just solving that for x, u minus 1 over 6. So it's sweet. Now I can just sub in for that. So u to the fifth times u minus 1 over 6 du. And now I can distribute through. These are all power rules. It's no problem. It's all in terms of u. We're good to go. They'll just be basic power rules. So my point is... The du must be there. If it's not there, we can't use up. But if there's extra stuff, as long as the du is sitting there and we can do the sub, we're good. That extra stuff 
we can just substitute as well. We just use our link, solve for x, and substitute in. Okay, cool. Oh, how are we doing? 20 minutes? That's not bad. Let's try another one. Let's say I have How about the integral of the tangent of x dx? Okay, this is one of our basic rules, but we didn't actually derive it. I just gave it to you. It's kind of one of a weird one. So let's see. We needed use of it in order to be able to do it, actually. So let's rewrite it by definition, right? Um, the tangent is the sine over the cosine. Sweet. Now, this is clearly not one of my basic rules. You know, I've got this quotient, right? And it's definitely not the integral of sine divided by the integral of cosine. Please do not make that mistake. Integrals are not well behaved with respect to quotients. So I'm kind of stuck with this. And I go, well, you know what? If I could u sub for the cosine down in that denominator, I'd have one over u, which is easy integration, ln of u. What's at stake is whether or not the derivative is going to be there. So let's see. Let's try it. Let's say if u is the cosine of x, so that I, I'm looking to do 1 over u du, because that'll just be ln absolute value of u, right? So that's my hope, is to just substitute for everything that's down in the denominator. But the derivative's got to be there, right? So let's see. We need to know what du is. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine negative sine of x dx. So here's our link, okay? And I look back at my problem and I go, this negative, don't care, doesn't bother me. Constant never done. What I have to have is the sine of x dx in order to be able to sub for du. And I go, ah, oh, right there. Sine of x dx, sitting right there. Fantastic. So, I have the sine of x dx, I'm just gonna solve for what I actually have. It's negative du is the sine of x dx. With that negative, I don't care. I'm just gonna pull it outside. So negative integral, well, we have one over u du. That sine of x dx, that is du, except for the negative sign, which I pulled outside, no problem. Now, that's an easy integration. 1 over u is ln absolute value of u. I have negative ln absolute value of u. But I was asked to do this in terms of x, not in terms of u, so I just need to back up. And I go, well, u is the cosine of x. So it's negative ln absolute value cosine of x plus some constant. There you go. Okay, so we've derived the rule for the tangent by using a u substitution, straightforward u substitution. And that explains where that weird ln comes from. You're like, where, why would that come from? Where, you know, what, what's going on with that ln absolute value stuff? Well, it's coming from this u sub, 1 over u. All right, let's try... Let's say how about something similar 
Yeah, how about 3x squared over um, 2 plus 5x cubed squared. So I actually have a composite inside of a composite, right? Because we have this one over x here, and then to the square. Actually, we can just look at that as a negative two power. I go, well, if I could substitute for everything that's inside there, that's what I'd get, right? I'd get a u to the negative two power. That's just a straight power rule. That would be ideal. So I want to... I can't sub for, if I sub for everything in the denominator, like that would be a best case scenario, I guess. I mean, I really would like to do that. If I could sub, if I said u is 2 plus 5x cubed squared, then I just have a 1 over u du, and that's ln of u. That's super easy. But I go, well, no, because this is a chain rule, right? So I'll get 2. 2 plus 5x cubed times the derivative of the inside, which is 15x squared, right? And I go, well, I got all of this junk in du that I don't have up here. So that's never going to work. I can't use the whole denominator. Say, so, well, let's see if I can do the next best thing and just sub for what's inside. If I say u is 2 plus 5x cubed, oops, let's see what's du and whether this is going to work. Well, du is derivative constant of 0, 15x squared, dx. Now i got to look back and I go, do I have the du? This 3, I'm going to pull it outside. I don't care about it, right? It doesn't bother me. Here, x squared dx is sitting right there. That is du. So I'm just going to bring this over and I say, well, 1 15th of du is x squared dx. That x squared dx sitting right there. But this 1 15th, I don't care, right? The constant never bothers me. It's just going to get pulled outside too. So I pull the 3 out and I pull the 1, the one over 15 out. And I've got 3 over 15. I could have simplified that to 1 over 5, but just to illustrate that I'm pulling this 3 out and I'm pulling the 1 15th out. Integral. The x squared dx, that is du. I pulled the 15th out. It's du. And here I have u 1 over u squared. Or which equivalent, u to the negative 2, which is a power rule now. We got um, 3 fifteenths negative, so it would be negative u to the negative 1, right? We have u to the negative 2, so I'm adding 1, there's a u to the negative 1, and then divide by the new power, which makes it negative, so negative over u, like that, plus a constant. Well, wait. I need to back up, right? Uh, I've got my answer in terms of, I, might have, I should probably simplify that as well. Um, let's see, we have negative one over five times u is two plus five x cubed. Plus a constant, there we go, and that's what we're doing. Nice. Okay. It's about a half hour there. We're doing well. Um, let's look at how it, it interacts with definite integrals. It's still going to work the same sort of way, right? The issue is the bounds. 
the debits. Okay, so for definite integrals, let me write it this way. Uh, the integral from A to B of F of U of X U prime of X DX. Okay, so we've got the DU sitting there. We can do the U sub. Now what's at stake here is we are doing this with respect to x. That's that little horizontal arrow, dx, from left to right. Our function is a function of x. Well, you know, ultimately, our composite is a function of x, and u is a function of x. These bounds, a and b, these are x values. They're x bounds. Okay. If I'm going to u sub in, and I need to go, I want f of u du, right, which has been our goal with the u sub, then I need to change those bounds. Those bounds need to be u bounds. I'm doing everything, my integration in terms of u. So I can, I need to change those bounds. In other words, I'm going to take u evaluated at b, that's going to, remember, u is a function of x, and that b is an x value. So I'm going to evaluate my u function at that b to get the u value there. And down here, I'm going to evaluate u at a. Okay. Now, students get up tight about this because uh, there's, there's work in changing the bounds. Yeah. And there is a choice. There's a 50-50 shot. You can either integrate in terms of u and change your bounds, and then you're straight evaluating, right? We're straight evaluating antiderivative of u barred at u of b, u of a. In other words, there's no more work to do other than just the integration if I change my bounds. I'm just going to evaluate there. Or I can leave the bounds as x values, but back sub. I'm going to have to back sub the u in terms of x. So this would be u of x barred at b and a. And very often, students want to do that. They don't want to change the bounds. They just want to back sub. It's 50-50 shot. Fine. Fair enough. It doesn't matter, really. But I'm telling you, the reason that we U subbed was to get rid of complexity. Evaluating that U is usually very little work. It's just a plug and chug, right? Just plug in X and evaluate. It's usually not hard. But back subbing all that complexity back in to then have to evaluate and plug in for all your x's and a blah, 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 blah. Why would you do that, right? You, you use subbed in order to eliminate complexity and you're just being lazy, so you're putting all that complexity back in and just to avoid changing the bounds. Well, suit yourself. It works either way, but you're making a hell of a lot more work for yourself. I'm guaranteeing you it's l always less work to simply change your bounds and evaluate that way rather than back subbing and leaving your bounds. But you have the choice either way. The issue is though, that you do need to change those bounds. They have to be there. So uh, let's, let's quickly do an example here, see if I can find one. Um, let's try. I'm just gonna steal an example here. Um, let's go integral negative 1 to 1 of x times x squared plus 1 cubed dx. 
Cool. So I look at this and I go, okay, that composite is screaming at me right here. If I can U sub for X squared plus one, it'll just be U cubed. That's a power rule, super easy to do. So that's what I am hoping for, right? Right now we're still in the if stage. We're saying if U is X squared plus one, well then what is DU? DU is 2x dx, right? Derivative constant is zero. I go, okay. I don't care about the two. It's the x dx that I'm worried about. And I go, sweet. x dx is sitting right there. Fantastic. So I'm going to solve for the x dx. That's what I need to substitute. This one half is going to come over here. But I don't care, right? I'm just going to pull that outside. So one half integral. I have u cube. The x dx is du, right? But I pulled the half out. Now, this is the point at which we have that decision. Either I can do the power rule on this and then back sub x squared plus 1 and then have to evaluate that twice at least. Or I can simply change my bounds now. Here I have a function of u. I'm with respect to u. So this is all looking beautiful. This is going to be a straight power rule. But these bounds, these are x's. These need to be u's. So I say, okay, I'm just going to go in. I have u as a function of x. So I say, if x is 1, then u is what? 1 squared plus 1. u is 2. Uh oh, goodness. Did I? Is that going to zero out? Do we have to use symmetry? Hmm. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let's see. <laughs> if u is 1, then u squared, they're going to come out to be exactly the same, aren't they? If u is negative 1, or if x is negative 1, with negative 1 squared plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2, that's the integral from 2 to 2. Sugar. That's just going to zero out, right? The integral from a to a is 0. So... Is it zero? Because it's symmetric. Let me just check the, th maybe it is just zeroing out. Maybe we get it for free. I didn't even think about it. I just picked a random um, example out of the book, but it's possible that this is just zeroing out right now. Um, let's see. Uh, what is X? times x square plus one cubed zoom six ooh, 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 ooh. let's see zoom box enough oh holy moly yeah it is exactly symmetric so if we're going because our bounds are symmetric negative one to one right so we're going as far on this side as to as far on that side and these are exactly the same shape so it does zero out what a cheap um <laughs> cheap example <laughs> But we can, by doing the use of and changing our bounds, we kind of get it for free. We don't even have to do any in, um, calculus here because our bounds are exactly the same, right? The integral from a to a is zero. <laughs> this, is just, this is one half of zero. How lame an example is that? It's zero. <laughs> okay, well, 
it is what it is. But by changing those bounds, we got that for free. Let me pick a different example. That was a random one that I could just pick it out of the book, right? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Tricky, tricky. Let's see if we can do, pick one that's not gonna... Oh, that's asymmetric. Let's try this one. How about it is all from zero to one of X cube. Two X to the fourth plus one cube DX. Oh, let's make that a square. I don't think it matters. Okay, cool. I think that one's asymmetric, so we should actually get an answer. Shouldn't just zero out. All right, so I've got this composite function. If I can substitute for everything that's inside that, those parentheses, I'm just gonna have u squared. That's a power rule, it'll be u cubed over three, that's easy. So that's what I'm hoping to do. u is two x to the four plus one. Well, if that's the case, what's du? du is 8x cubed dx. Derivative counsel is 0. And I look and I go, the 8, don't care. I'm just going to pull that out. It's the x cubed dx that I have to have. And it's right there. x cubed dx. So I go, awesome. 1 8th du is the x cubed dx that's sitting there. This 1 8th I'm just going to pull outside. So 1 8th integral, we have u squared, the x cubed dx, that is du with the 1 8th pulled outside. Now, if x is 0, this will just 0 out. And I'll get 1. Right? So if x is 0 at the lower bound, this just zeroes out and u is 1. If x is 1, I get 1 to the 4th, that's 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, these are u's. I've evaluated u as a function of x at those x's to find out at those x's, what is the, the u value? 1 and 3. Now I don't need to back up. I can just evaluate this thing straight. We're done now that we've plugged that in. Right? If I had left the bounds as 0 and 1 as x's, we're going to have to back sub in 2x to the 4th plus 1. There's probably going to be powers on it, and we're going to have to do all that evaluation. So why not just do it this way? So this is... We've already changed our bounds, so we're good to go. We have 1 8th u cube over 3. That's our antiderivative. Add 1, divide by the new power. Barred at 3 and 1. Okay, so that's u cube over 24. Um, 3 cube over 24. 3 times 3. Minus... Right, this is our bar, minus, evaluate at 1. So 1 cube, 1 times 1, over 24. So it looks like 27 minus 1, so 26 over 24. Looks like we should be able to simplify that, 13 over 12. go. Okay. So the issue when doing u sub with a definite integral is 
we need to change those bounds. If we're going to go into the U dimension, we need U bounds. But that simply means take your X, your bound, evaluate your U and find out what its value is there. Right? When X is 0, we just plugged in 0 here and found out that U is 1 there. Okay? So that's it. That's U substitution.